My name is Lindsay Dubbs. I'm a research assistant professor for UNC Chapel Hill and the UNC Coastal Studies Institute. I am involved in undergraduate research programs here at CSI and also in doing research on sargassum communities in the Gulf Stream as well as environmental assessment related to all of the aspects of the North Carolina Renewable Ocean Energy Program. Right now I'm doing research looking at how differences in turbulence, changes in turbulence, affect the productivity and nutrient cycling in sargassum communities. Sargassum is a brown macroalgae. The two sargassum species that we are looking at here are sargassum fluitans and sargassum natans that are completely pelagic species, meaning that they spend their entire life cycle in the water column. One of the roles that sargassum plays in the pelagic ocean is that it serves as a very important habitat. There's an estimated 150 different species of invertebrates that are found associated with sargassum. There are then species that use that structure in the open ocean as habitat, like fish, also hatchling sea turtles, loggerheads, um, Kemp's Ridley and green sea turtles all are found on sargassum during their hatchling stage of their life cycle. There are also larger game fish found associated with sargassum as well as juvenile fish. Sargassum is also important to the nutrient cycling of the pelagic ocean. So we're interested in how the installation of Gulf Stream energy turbines might affect those important ecosystem functions of sargassum. The sargassum itself is always found at the very surface of the water. It has little air bladders that keep it suspended in the water column so that it can always be subjected to sunlight. Whereas the Gulf Stream energy turbines would be located at a much deeper depth. So you'd find them, we're probably looking at between 30 and 50 meters below the surface of the water. We're not concerned about an interaction, a direct interaction. What we're more concerned with is that there is a wake generated by those turbines that will increase turbulence at the surface. And then we collect environmental data that is used for our experimental setup when we get back to the laboratory. And when we get back to the laboratory, we set the sargassum up in what we call mesocosms. They're basically just aquaculture. We, within those tubs, try to replicate conditions similar to that which is experienced by the sargassum in its habitat in the Gulf Stream. And then we subject a proportion of that sargassum to increase turbulence with a little um, circulation pump. And basically what we're looking at is the primary productivity and the nitrogen fixation in those sargassum mats before and after turbulence is introduced. Off the coast of North Carolina, we see sargassum seasonally. So the peak season for sargassum is between June and sometime in the fall depending on circulation patterns. When the bloom is, the sargassum blooms in the spring in the northwestern part of the Gulf of Mexico and basically is carried by currents up to the coast of North Carolina. The reason why people should care about sargassum research is that really sargassum is important both for fish, so a food source, a recreation source for humans, also important just in its own right as part of the ocean ecosystem. And then also we need energy and the Gulf Stream has the potential to provide uh, significant baseload power, meaning that it's constant power. It's a great source of energy that has yet to be harnessed thus far. And so you're looking at the intersection of those two things, fish, endangered species, the ecology of the ocean and energy. And so, we are at the stage right now with renewable ocean energy development where we have an opportunity to reduce the negative environmental impacts that might be caused by this extraction of energy from the ocean environment. And we're also at the stage where we might be able to maximize the benefits that might be provided by that intersection.